Hi everybody. Um, I was painting in my studio today and I decided to video the process because I've been receiving a lot of great feedback to some of my previous videos. So this painting is on a 12 inch square gallery uh, depth wooden panel which I purchased on Amazon and the, all the links for these products will be in the description of this video. So what I was thinking with this uh, painting, my kind of my concept, was to create kind of a rocky, kind of sandy base and then have water kind of like like springs, like natural springs coming between from the ground um, and creating sort of like hot spas, kind of, you know, natural spas that had some depth to them. So I'm going to be using a few different products because I'm going to need to do some layering during this piece. So I've just put down uh, essentially two greys. One is a more of a silver the first one that I put down, the darker of the two, is a Perlex pigment and it's called Antique Silver. The Antique Silver is a much darker silver in comparison to the regular silver um, pigment. And what I placed on top of that was a black diamond pigment powder and the color of that was diamond aluminum and uh, that is essentially a mica powder that uh, I purchased on Amazon black diamond pigments I use them a lot in my paintings I'm very pleased with the quality and the effects that I get from those so that is the two colors that are down presently and I'm trying to um, create some some kind of some texture to the eye uh, once it's cured it'll have a glass like finish um, such as you know the finish that resin gives but I wanted to create some movement in the actual uh, pigments themselves and the way that the two interact because these are two different products but they're very similar in their quality so um, you have to create some movement because they're not likely to provide that kind of effect themselves. Um, but after I torch, and you'll see that when I torch these um, silvery grey um, resin that I've placed down, you'll see that they kind of even out, but they do retain some of the characteristics of texture. But it is an illusion because it's under the resin or integral to the resin and the resin is essentially given, going to provide a glass-like finish. So I'm taking the excess that I have of those two pigments and I'm running it around the side of the, the uh, wooden panel just to kind of close in the edges. Um, I'm, I want the blue that I introduced for the water to roll over the edge but I do want to um, mainly have the kind of rocky and it will be kind of sandy ground to be throughout the piece and around the edges. And I'm just continuing with the two mica powders, the black diamond and the pearlex. And I'm just kind of closing in my sides. Um, when it comes to the blue, I will be able to run it over the side, straight over the top of this uh, mica powder. It shouldn't give me any issues. So right now I'm just taking the excess out of uh, the containers to make sure I've used all the product. For this piece, I'm using eight fluid ounces of resin, which should be totally adequate, but there shouldn't be much waste. So um, that's why I'm kind of making sure I 
use all of the resin that's in the cups. And that's eight fluid ounces combined for the whole piece. Now I'm just making some coverage. Um, if anybody's watched my previous videos, I'm inclined to kind of tap away and just make sure that most of the uh, wooden panel is covered. And the areas that I've left uh, with no resin presently will be the areas that I create my spa kind of natural springs of water. Now what I'm taking here is, um, I'm taking actually some, it's called iridescent silver fine. Um, it's a very silvery acrylic paint and it's a high flow acrylic by Golden. Because although I like the more darker greys, um, I do want some highlights within the piece and, and this silver will definitely provide that. And because it's iridescent, it has a little bit of a colour shift quality to it. So um, this particular paint by uh, Golden, Iridescent Silver Fine it's called, it's a high flow acrylic, it will um, have a little bit of a colour shift so it'll be kind of a sparkly shiny silver and then just kind of a highlighting silver. And when I start layering the blue, um, I'm going to be using a few different products. And the reason why I'm using, you, you don't need as many blues as I'm going to apply to get great effects. But I'm trying to um, use as many different um, substrates, which, um, sorry, solutes, because I want to layer paint with ink and um, I'm going to be using a little bit of spray paint. Um, I kind of want to make some combinations because when you apply ink to resin or paint to resin or mica powder to resin and then you layer them against each other, they naturally create some interaction without the inclusion of um, you know, different products like silicon, etc. They have a natural reaction to each other. So the very first blue that I'm layering down is a golden fluid acrylic. And I've used this one before in my ocean painting. And it's called Thalo Blue. And it's the green shade. And as I said, I'm going to be using a lot of products and they are, will be in my description and uh, the Amazon links will be there also to, uh, so that you can check those out. So this is Phalo Blue Green Shade and it's mixed into uh, clear resin as is all of these products. And as I said at the beginning, you will see me use a lot of different colors but the volume of the resin to begin with was eight fluid ounces. And when you uh, mix your products with resin, uh, you're, you're going to be surprised if you haven't mixed them before how little of the solute, the products, be it the paint, ink, mica powder, you're going to be surprised how little you need to get the color. Um, so, and that's very uh, typical of golden fluid acrylics where you're going to use, you know, five or six drips into kind of one and a half fluid ounces is likely to yield you color. Um, you can always add a little bit more if you feel the color is not deep enough. 
Um, it de also depends on how translucent you want that colour. But this particular golden blue, which is phalo blue green shade, is I use it a lot in my ocean pieces. Um, it's a bit of a go-to colour for me. I really like it. Now this colour that I'm applying here is another blue from my Ocean Pieces, if you've watched that video, it's another go-to colour for me. Um, and uh, this particular um, colour is, actually that's a correction, I'm just realising it isn't what I was thinking it was. It's actually, this one is a Rust-Oleum um, spray paint and the colour is Seaside. And it's a very rich, lighter turquoise blue. So this is a spray paint and it's been added directly into the clear resin. I use a lot of uh, spray paint with my clear resin. And as far as reliable color and finish, um, I'm inclined to go with Rust-Oleum. Rust-Oleum seems to give some really beautiful effects. Now, this colour that I'm putting down right now is a Liquidex ink. And uh, the colour is Muted Turquoise. And that, that's a great ink. That's a go-to for me. I always have at least one unopened on the shelf. Um, I don't like to run out of this colour. And the reason why I don't like to run out of this colour is because it has some unique qualities that I haven't found in other inks. And um, I'm always looking for that kind of a unique quality. And what I like about it is depending on how much you use it can create some really interesting variations in the color. Um, and you don't need a lot, it comes with a dropper. So this was mixed into about one fluid ounce of resin. I took the dropper and I filled it twice into that resin and that created this beautiful color. And it's interesting, if you, if you look at my canvas, my wood panel, and let's pretend it's a clock face and you're looking at nine o'clock. That blue that I've just layered on top of that Rust-Oleum uh, spray paint, you can see it's reacting. Can you see kind of holes kind of appearing and the seaside Rust-Oleum paint is trying to ease its way up and make its presence known? There's no chemical reaction other than the two solutes working together at that point. And it's again, you can see it again at about seven o'clock. Now, what I'm putting down now is what I was thinking I was going to put down. Um, and that is my golden fluid acrylic and it's in the color teal. And that one is also um, an absolute go-to for me on my ocean pieces. So I, I've come to realize that certain blues, not only are they very rich and very true to their color, they are especially good at reacting with the other solutes around them. And, and I think that's quite... Um, quite special to or significant to resin painting that you can take clear resin, you can take various different solutes, be it spray paint, fluid acrylic paint, um, ink, etc. And once they're in resin and then they're layered together, the solutes, because they're, they have different weight attached to them, as a chemical, I guess, um, or as a liquid, they will start to interact with the other solutes, even though they're suspended in clear resin. 
And that is why when you cast your eye down to seven o'clock, if this was a clock face, can you see how much they're reacting there and where all those holes are feathering out? That is ink sitting on top of spray paint that's completely mixed in clear resin and yet they're still having an effect. I'm just making sure I use up all my uh, muted turquoise, and that is the Liquitex ink. So I'm starting to create my water um, springs that are in the ground. Um, I've rolled them almost over the side. With resin art, you, it will, when I torch it for the final time, the, um, the resin will become more liquid and it will likely roll over the sides anyway. But if your wooden panel is completely level, which this is, that roll off is minimal. Now, this is the middle of my um, kind of my hot springs, my spa. Um, and this is a new product that I recently found um, on Amazon. And it is, the color is called Mermaid Tau. And the maker is Jane Davenport. And it's an ink, and it is, as I said, it's called Mermaid Tau, and I will put the link in my uh, description. It is a very translucent ink, and uh, it comes in a dropper bottle also, and I put um, about two full dropper sizes into um, about one and a half fluid ounces of clear resin. And what I notice with this is if you compact it down within the piece, so it has its own area, um, it has a, a reflective quality where it gives the illusion of depth. So that's why I selected it for the, kind of the middle of my, my kind of hot springs or uh, pools of water is because I wanted the eye to look in, I wanted the depth. And um, I will put some images from photographs of the finished piece at the end of this video and, and hopefully I'll be able to capture um, some of that kind of illusion within those photographs. Now, what I'm doing now is, I always say this is kind of one of my more enjoyable parts of this art form is I'm just winding through some of my excess resin. Um, I'm essentially layering. A lot of the beautiful effects that you see in resin are created by this layering of different solutes um, against each other. And while I'm doing that, again, you know, I really wanna highlight, look at the, uh, look at seven o'clock and look at, nine o'clock, nearly nine o'clock, if this was a clock face. There is no additives other than the solute, paint, ink, mica powder, etc., and resin. And yet all those effects are happening on their own. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, I kind of ran out of green and blue and what have you, so I decided, well, so that, that space that I had at the top is now going to have to become more rock, more of the rock. As it happens, I think it works. So I've just put some more grey in there, but I will be evening that out. And I'm lightly tapping just to combine, and I'm following the flow of the water. 
but I'm leaving the green, kind of greeny color, um, untouched to a large uh, extent because I don't really want to introduce too much to those areas. And I have to apologize about my studio lighting on the right side. Um, I have a painting that was curing on my table in my studio. So I kind of temporarily set myself up in a different space and I didn't realize how much reflection I was getting from the ceiling lighting. Now what I'm using now is another spray paint. And if you like gold in your um, resin art, this is a Krylon Shortcuts metallic paint in gold. Um, and uh, I use that quite a lot also. Um, it is a really nice uh, kind of understated gold. So um, that's what I'm using right now. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give my water even more definition so that it looks like it's running on top of the rocks. Um, and I'm putting some of the gold into the gray and silver because I want to create the illusion of not just, I don't want it to look like it's sitting on like a concrete. I want it to have more, more of an organic feel. So, you know, if you look at rocks where there's water, they're, they're not uniformly one color. They have other color elements within them. So I'm going to be adding some gold to the uh, silver and aluminum um, pigment areas just to kind of highlight some more interest in that, uh, those parts of the painting. And I'm just spraying some 91% uh, alcohol uh, before I torch. 91% alcohol sprayed onto resin, any of the surface solutes um, will disperse out a little bit. Um, the, the alcohol appears to break them apart a little bit and then the heat coming behind accelerates that. And if you, if you look at the um, back to seven o'clock and you follow that line up, a lot of that, some of that that's just happened was due to the uh, spraying of alcohol and then following up with the heat. So I'm continuing with my uh, Krylon Shortcuts metallic gold spray paint and resin. Um, it is naturally sinking, um, being a little bit more understated of a gold to have in a piece but um, I'm continuing the layer to make sure that I do have some retained that they are um, giving providing some definition to the water and it and I've been in the last half an hour I went in the studio and had a good look at my painting and the gold definitely um, is a good addition to this piece. It definitely it seems to provide a, um, a lift to the paint and almost makes it look more dimensional than what it is, a flat piece of art. It's all, from, from a distance, it almost looks three dimensional. And a lot of that is the addition of the gold because it lifted it, it provided depth. So I'm running some gold around the green of my um, little pools of water um, because I've been to see some hot springs and they appear to have kind of interesting kind of, I guess, mineral content and towards the edge they often have um, some kind of interesting colours around the edge of the, the water essentially. So I am including some gold around the inner 
component of my pores of water. And when they heat it, when I torch, that will um, kind of pull it out and diffuse it some. And I am going to come in at the end with my um, heat gun uh, and I'm just going to move the blue a little bit um, to give it some flow. At the moment, I have interesting um, design, but I don't, I don't have any feeling of the water flowing. So the hot air gun will be able to do that for me. You know, the blowtorch is really good um, in this art form, but if you ever want to create movement and you're not going to tilt the canvas, which is I'm not going to tilt this canvas, really the only option is um, to create real movement is the hot um, uh, air gun. And as the resin now is starting to get a little bit more, um, the curing process has begun, so it's starting to get a little thicker. Some of the gold that I'm applying is actually staying on the top layer. And what I'm doing now is I'm taking what's left of any uh, resin that's been colored or, you know, with an additive and I'm applying it to the sides. And actually the only uh, color that I was left with um, un with any unused was the uh, diamond, black diamond uh, aluminum resin. So the sparkly kind of gray silver. So I've, I'm pulling that out and I'm running it around the sides. When I do do my final torching and a little bit of my heat gun, the some of that blue will kind of bleed over the side. And that'll be good because it will run down into the gray and, and almost carry the design over. Even though mostly I have my, my artwork placed into what you call a floating frame. So... The sides are, they don't have to be part of the finished piece as such, but I do like to have some finish, if possible, over the sides. So I'm lightly torching again and that helps you get a that mirror like finish that really high sheen finish but it also helps me if I'm going to come behind with my heat gun which I am because I need some heat to be able to move the layers in a way that makes them move together rather than against each other. As resin cures, there is a point where you can't move it anymore. And if you do attempt to move it, because it's become almost a jowl-like consistency, it you're just ruining your painting. It are just butt up against each other and it'll roll over each other and you end up with not a not um a beautiful painting, you end up with something quite awkward and um probably not salvageable. So um that's the big um, thing with resin is being able to kind of gauge as you're using it and look at the viscosity and, and recognize when it's got to a point where you're not going to be able to move it anymore. So I've come in with my heat gun um, and I'm 
I lightly move it over the resin because I want the validation of movement. And if I see movement, I hang around and, and then I will carry on moving it. But I don't want to try and move resin that doesn't want to move. So right now I'm rolling it over the water and I'm trying to kind of diffuse out the design and, and make it look like it's flowing. And I've just put my hand on there because I noticed it felt like it was very warm. Um, resin, when it starts the curing process, gets quite warm. It doesn't get hot, but it gets quite warm. Um, and sometimes when you're working it, you can feel the heat. And that's an indication that you probably need to stop um, heating it. Because uh, if you overheat resin, it scorches. And the blemishes that come up because of the scorch cannot be removed easily. So, um, so that's why you saw me with my hand. I was just a little bit concerned how warm it was feeling. So the hot air gun did kind of um, diffuse out some of the design and, and smooth it out and make it return it back to being more um, representative of fluid, I would say. So... Uh, I'm kind of tidying all my um, cups up and uh, my popsicle sticks that I've used. And uh, that's because once resin is in, is once you're finished with your resin, you have to move to cover it pretty quick because it's really sticky and anything in the um, atmosphere will stick to it. Um, now, what I normally do if I'm selling the piece... Um, I come behind the next day and I add a clear layer. And uh, you really do need to do that if you are selling resin art because it gives that kind of uh, beautiful finish. So if an element of dust is, you know, could be seen by the eye within your piece, you, it will get locked away forever in another clear layer on the top. It, it, it just evens out and uh, makes makes everything uh, perfect. So, and I'm about to bring you in for some close-ups. And again, I'm sorry about the lighting on the right side. Um, I definitely won't put my work in that position again. It's a shame because it is very beautiful on the right side. So this is my view. I've turned the camera. This is what I was seeing because uh, the camera is alongside me. The blues really pop. And uh, it's not easy to see, but look at the green. It's almost like you could swim in there. It's real depth. And there's the gold. And as I said, it's a more understated gold. Um, I kind of like that product for um, kind of organic pieces where I'm trying to create maybe rocks, etc. And there's a little bit of the mica powder and it came over into that spring. Now look at that. That looks like it's deep, doesn't it? So much depth. You feel like you could go swimming in there. And there's some more of the blue just gushing out. The movement was the um, hot air gun. And uh, the layering of the different products within the resin enabled to have that kind of more dimensional kind of feel to it. And because I outlined some of it with the gold, it lifted it and made it look like it was running on the surface. So thank you guys for tuning in. And I decided to call this piece Life Force. Um, and it kind of water is uh, 
keeps us living. And uh, I'm going to now show you some close-ups. And thank you for joining me. And uh, please check out the uh, products that I used via the description. I added the Amazon link so that you can uh, check these products out. Um, you don't need all of these different blues to create this piece, but I would say a minimum of three different colors um, will give you some great effects. So have a great evening, and uh, I hope you enjoy, and leave me any comments, and I will answer uh, your questions. Bye, guys.